Hello everybody, welcome to the channel. Uh, now, if you're new to the channel and haven't seen any of the other videos, take a quick look, there's plenty on there. And now if you are subscribed to the channel, you'll know I've had about a year off. Uh, well, that's just because, to be perfectly honest, I've been busy. But, due to obvious reasons, I'm back now for a little while. Uh, my intention is to try and get a video a month out. Um, we'll see how that goes, I've got a list about that long of, uh, of ideas for videos. So, today's video is going to be sort of a continuation on one of the old ones. So if you remember on one of the other videos we put a oil cooler on the Volkswagen camper. Uh, that all went fine, the fan works great and it, and it did the desired job. The only problem I have with it, uh, I put in a thermostatic switch when I did the video. I think I put it on there. Uh, the only problem is, by the time the oil's got to it, and it's, it's more of a coolant switch than an oil switch. I can't find one that's got a low enough temperature range for oil. So it never really comes on with that. So I've been running it all the time, which is fine, except when you want to leave a campsite at 7 o'clock in the morning, it's loud, really loud. That fan, although it's huge and fantastic and it cools great, it makes a lot of noise. So what I'm going to do today, rather than try and put a sensor on it to do our sense the temperature of the oil, I'm actually going to put a timer on it. So when you turn on the ignition, it counts down, and then after, I think, 10 or 15 minutes, it's variable, I'll show you in a moment, um, it'll turn the fan on, turn it off, turn the ignition on again, and the, fan, the fan's off. So, I think that's a good solution for it. I mean, ideally, you would have it thermostatically controlled. Uh, can't figure an easy way of doing that, because I've got a sensor that'll go down low enough in temperature, so I'm going to do the next best thing. And it's actually really simple. So, most of this video is going to be me on the bench over here, um, showing you what the circuitry is going to be. So, let's take a look. So, here is the circuit we're going to use. Super, super simple, um, but don't panic, you haven't got to make it. These are available on eBay for about £2 each. I buy them literally 10 at a time. They are so useful. Uh, and what it does, uh, it counts down 99 minutes to zero or 99 seconds to zero. Um, super useful for all sorts of different things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how basically to wire this circuit quickly and show you the box I've made for the camper van. So if we look, I'm going to try and do this with a pen whilst looking at the back of the camera. So first things first, positive and negative on those two terminals just there. 12 volt positive, uh, so ideal for working on automotive stuff, so that's super useful. These two here are what's called the key, it even says it just there. Uh, now you don't actually put a feed or anything on there, when you want to trigger this circuit, you simply join these two together. Don't put a feed down it or give either terminal an earth. It will blow the board up. Ask me how I know. So yeah, join those two together either through a switch or oh, anything you like. doesn't matter. But only join those two together. Never give them a feed or an earth. So that sets off the, uh, the timer. That's the trigger, if you like. And then over here, we've got a standard... What's this one? It's a relay. Uh, it says, I think it says 30 amps, looking at it through the back of the camera, no, no, it says 10 amps, just there. Uh, I wouldn't pull 10 amps through it, I'm actually going to use this, as you'll see on the camper van in a moment, I'm going to use this to trigger another relay, a normal automotive relay, so what have you got? Terminal-wise, you've got the common, so your earth or whatever will go to here, so that one never changes, and what happens is, when the relay triggers, it will either go this way, or it will go that way. Now, this relay is what's called normally closed. So when there's no power on it, like right now, we have continuity between there and there. So these top two pins. Now when the timer comes on, what happens is it makes a contact, it loses this one and puts a contact between these two. It literally changes over, it's like a light switch. So when you set the timer going, this, this pin here will be connected to that one. Uh, counts down for however many minutes or seconds you want it to, and then click, it'll go back to this one. So we're going to actually use this circuit a little bit backwards. What we're going to do is we're going to wire the relay on our cooling fan between here and here. And what that's going to do is, as soon as I turn on the ignition, it's going to go click and put the feed over here instead. So it's going to count down, and as soon as the timer runs out, it'll put a feed back to where it is in its normally closed position. So after a certain amount of time, this one becomes uh, this one gets continuity, and we can bring the cooling fan in. Now one of the couple of the, couple of the little things we've got on this circuit board here, this uh, little pot here, you adjust it left and right, and that actually adjusts the time. So the time will be displayed on there, and then you can see this little thing here where it says seconds and minutes. That's a little jumping type thing there. You can pull it off and put it over here 
for minutes, take it off, put it over there for seconds. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to show you what I've done to get this in the back of the camper van and we'll do a quick demonstration with it. Okay, so here we can see the uh, little circuit board, the timer circuit, inside a little project box I've put it into. Uh, it's held in there just with a hot glue gun, nothing more, nothing more than that. Um, so, if I take the lid off so you can see inside, what we've got now is we've got the two feed wires coming to it from a bench power supply, just so I can show you on the bench before I install it. Um, these two here, the key if you remember we are talking about the key, um, they're joined together. I've got just a little piece of wire joining those together. You might, yeah, yeah, it's that little orange piece. You can just about to see it on the camera. So, yeah, about there somewhere. So the key is now held in permanently. So the second you put power onto this supply, onto this board, it will start counting down. Simple as that. For the purposes of this little bench top demonstration, I've got the little uh, bus bar type thing there onto seconds, not onto minutes because it would be a boring video if I stand here for 15 minutes and let it count down. Uh, that's the only thing you have to do though, if I move it across one little, it's, it's set at 15 at the moment, so it'll either be 15 seconds as it's set, if I literally take that off and put it on the next pin, it will be 15 minutes. That's how you change it, it's as simple as that. And we've got the relay, so as soon as we power the relay up, it's going to go click and, and put the, the, uh, the, the switch from this pin to this pin. Okay, now this pin is going to be empty, so effectively it's putting its continuity to nothing, and we're not using that. So you would use this pin if you wanted to time something on for X amount of time. So if you wanted to do something with this light, so when you came up outside your house and turned off your ignition, your headlight stayed on for a few minutes, that's the pin you'd use. You go to that one, so it stays on. I'm going to ignore that because I want to use this relay in its normally closed state, so when there's no power on, like right now as it happens, there's continuity between there and there. No power whatsoever, and that's what happens when the time has run out or there is no feed to it. Now the relay that we're switching our fan is all completely ignition fed, so if the ignition switch isn't on, the fan cannot run. So I can actually join this all together, so this one to this one, I'm probably going to switch the feed, the switching feed to the relay, uh, the, the, the fan relay, between these two, so we'll come from our ignition switched, we'll come in, out of there and then to the relay and that will do what it does. So with everything turned off now, no ignition feed to anything, nothing will run. As soon as I turn power onto the circuit it's going to count down for 15 minutes, the relay is going to switch to this pin, the cooling fan can't run because this pin's dead and after 15 minutes there'll be a click and it'll put feed onto this one, click the relay and the main relay and then the fan will run. So what I'll do now, just turn this on so you can see it count down, it's actually pretty cool and ignition on. So we're going to count down 15 seconds. You might have heard a little click. Well that little click was the relay switching over to the other direction. So it'll count down, count down, count down. And that little click there when the green light went out is telling me that this one's now got feed to it, now got continuity between there and there. So this is just basically an electronic switch. It's a three-way switch. Imagine a toggle switch which should go sort of Centre is off, on, or on, okay, and that's all this is. So, except this is, uh, this isn't even that actually, it's not that, not that complicated, it's either on that way, or on that way. There's no middle position. So, that's what it is, if I take that bar out now, and then move it over to minutes, instead of it counting down 15 seconds, it'll count down 15 minutes. So, that's, that's basically how that works, it's nothing complicated. Now what you can do, if you wanted uh, more or less time, that pot just there, I'm not going to do it because I've actually locked out the key, I'll put that little bar between the two, so I'll use my pen to point, it's a bit more accurate. Uh, with the key removed, you can turn this pot and literally watch that display, it will go between zero, uh, I think it's one, and 99. So it's either one and 99 seconds or one and 99 minutes. Uh, it's as easy as that, you just twiddle it to wherever you want it. When you're done, you know, put the key back in or put a switch on it if that's what you want to do. I think you could use one of these as a glow plug timer if you wanted to use it to uh, pull in a glow plug relay. Piece of ca it really is a handy little circuit, that's why I buy so many of them. Anyway, I'm yabbering now. So, let's go mount this up in the van and wire it into that cooling fan. Okay, so we're back in the uh, van now and you'll have to excuse the absolute mess of the wiring. Uh, the only problem is with the current situation I can't just nip out and buy what I need. But we've got our little box here, uh, if I move the camera around a little bit, 
as we see over here, I've got two relays. This one here is actually the ignition feed, uh, sorry, the ignition relay, which pulls in a fuse box set up there. And that fuse box feeds all of the ECU wiring on the van. Um, if you haven't seen that on the channel, take a look, that's actually quite interesting. And the one sat next to it is the one for the fans underneath that we're controlling. So, again, the wiring's a little bit grotty, but it's wired as we described. So what I'm going to do now, if I can get the camera to sit somewhere, which I'm sure I can. Uh, let's take a look. I've got that there, so I'm going to leave, you see. Look at that wiring, it's awful. Uh, lots of balancing of things on other things. Okay, so I'll turn on the ignition. Uh, you'll hear the fan just chirp very quickly. That's because as soon as we put um, power to this board, as we've said, it's in its normally closed position. It's actually sat there right now with the ignition off. So as soon as I turn it on, momentarily it will be on normally closed and switch to normally open. So you'll hear the fan just instantaneously spike up and then shut down. The timer should count down and then the fan will start. So let's try it. Now I'll turn the ignition off, and that should kill the fan, and reset the timer to zero. <sighs> oh, okay, so that should do for this video. Look at that mess of wire in there. So I've got a lot of looming work to do to tidy all that up, and to be honest, some of this wiring for this control system isn't how I'd want it, I've just had to use what I've had kicking around. So, that'll do. Uh, see you next time. Thanks for watching. Check us out on Patreon. Just press the like button, press the alarm button, and uh, see you next time.